Ladies and gentlemen, next generation GPUs are going to be absolutely ridiculous in terms of performance. There have been a couple of very interesting pieces of information which have come out of Computex. I will talk to you guys about this, including the release date of Blackwell slash Hopper next, as NVIDIA have provided us a roadmap of sorts. So we're going to be talking about that, plus a lot more stuff after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also of course sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So Computex was a very interesting event with NVIDIA of course doubling down on things like artificial intelligence and since its stock price has been absolutely going ballistic at the moment, it's not surprising that they want to be very aggressive uh, to show obviously that they've got a very interesting products coming up so that obviously investors continue to pump up that stock price. And with that, they have shown us a, a roadmap of sorts, which is Hopper Next. Now, Hopper Next is basically Blackwell. And to my understanding, anyway, from what I've been told with multiple sources, as well as some other leaks online, um, this is basically going to be bifurcated, uh, which is not too surprising. We've seen it before, of course, from NVIDIA uh, across different product segments. So, for example, we will see... RTX 50 cards based on G, uh, GeForce, basically, which, of course, are going to go into, you know, your desktop PC, uh, mobile, um, laptops, that type of thing. And, of course, we will also see HPC implementations, which naturally will be for AI and all the other stuff that uh, NVIDIA are absolutely just making a killing at at the moment for, um, you know, the, the profits for those cards are just absolutely just ludicrous. And we can see that the release window at the moment is 2024. And according to NVIDIA, it will offer another, quote, massive leap in performance. Now, I have heard that uh, Blackwall is absolutely ridiculous in terms of performance. I have actually been pumping my sources from uh, some additional information. I'll probably release that over the next several days because I want to try and get a bit more information before I release the video for obvious reasons. But, um, yeah, I think that Blackwall will be very impressive in. I think that NVIDIA are going to be on a very good trajectory actually over the next uh, several generations of products. It's going to be very interesting to see how AMD also counter. Obviously RDNA 4 is also going to be releasing almost certainly next year. I think it's probably going to be the latter port of, uh, portion of 2024, excuse me. So it's going to be very interesting to see what the actual performance targets of RDNA 4 are when it finally launches. Um, obviously RDNA 3 it just didn't seem to hit the performance targets that AMD were um, you know telling us about so it's going to be very interesting to see how all of that plays out especially given there have been a couple of other very intriguing things that have been going on at Camp NVIDIA one of which um, so for quite a while now we've been hearing reports even back in March and I believe even before that that Intel are being considered uh, by NVIDIA to basically produce their chips. Now, this is basically Intel's foundry services. And very interestingly, Jensen has actually commented to say the test chips in Intel's foundries are actually looking really good. Now, to my understanding, Blackwell is still being produced on TSMC's 3NM process. I actually leaked that myself, and then Coppertite 7 Kimmy has basically said pretty much the same thing, that this is what seems to be happening. Now, this, however, that does not necessarily mean that Intel could not be used by NVIDIA for specific products um, for a number of reasons. I mean, at the moment, NVIDIA are just selling, well, let's just say they're selling a high number of cards. Um, so I would not be surprised if they did decide to tap into it, depending on the capacity of TSMC and whether NVIDIA feel that they need that additional capacity or not. It's going to be very interesting to see what this would look like if Intel are leveraged 
uh, because obviously that would be kind of a win from Intel. In some ways, obviously, they are also kind of competing with NVIDIA with the uh, with their own product lineups. So obviously, we'll have Battle Mage, which is going to launch uh, probably around the early Q2 portion of next year as well. But yeah, let's face it, any money is good money. And uh, I don't think uh, Intel or any company actually would be in a position where they would turn this down. So it's going to be very interesting to see what that would look like and what products would be on, let's say, TSMC, what products would be on Intel. But continuing on the subject of Computex and NVIDIA and potentially AMD as well, there was a fascinating prototype which was shown off during Computex. Now, I believe the original photos were taken by WCCF Tech, so of course I'll give them credit and provide a link, of course, in the description of the video. So, you can see yourself, the cards, well, rather the coolers themselves, because this is the concept. Well, let's just say they're a thick boy. Um, so this Computex concept is basically a bimetallic fin array, this 3D vapor chamber, and there's also, even in some cases, an AIO cooler. Now, the first design you can see above basically has a mixture of different uh, uh, things. It's got copper and aluminum fins. And the bottom line is, this is going to be, well, let's just say, for very power-hungry cards. From what I understand, the test, well, rather the concept, was using an RTX 4090 um, but it's possible this could be for an RTX 4090 Ti or even potentially an RTX Titan now I released a video I think it was yesterday to say that from my information anyway the 4090 Ti is probably not going to launch maybe it's going to be the Titan but honestly it's so difficult to know with NVIDIA. They they can make decisions pretty much the last minute. And obviously this cooler theoretically could also potentially work with the Titan as well, depending on a number of things. Uh, obviously it would depend on, for example, the PCB and stuff like that as well. Um, I'm going to be very interested to see, though, what the next generation of cards are going to be like. Obviously, at the end of the day, you can't just have a card which just scales infinitely in power consumption. I mean, jokes aside, you can't just have, like, you know, the RTX 5090 like, choke down a thousand watts of power, uh, because obviously there are things like cooling concerns and this card is just absolutely ridiculous true story i'm working on a bit of a project a fun project uh, which should be out in the next several days actually on the channel and uh yeah i basically literally could not put a 1490 into one of my cases i quite literally had to just take the uh, rtx 49 sorry i had to take the entire motherboard out and just like plonk it on the side the 3080 i had and another card they were fine um and I think the 6800 XT also fit, but uh, the 4090 is just such a chonky boy. It just, it was like a centimeter, like half an inch out at most. So obviously there are concerns with these next generation cards and well, it's gonna be really interesting to see how uh, the 5090 and so on are actually called what type of power consumption, whether it's gonna be 450 watts, 500 watts or something like that. And one final story while on the subject of uh, tech stuff for PC. I'm just going to go over this really quickly. Um, basically, SK Hynix have announced new HBM3E memory. And this is up to 8 Gbps. So this basically is eight times faster than the first generation of uh, of uh, HBM and will represent also a 25% increase in speed over HBM3's original adoption. I'm going to read a quick quote from SK Hynix. Amid growing expectations that the memory market will start to recover from the second half, we believe our industry-leading DRAM technology, proven again through mass production of the 1BNM process this time, will help us improve earnings from the second half. This, by the way, was from... And I'm probably going to mispronounce this, and I apologize, but from Jongwon Kim. And this individual is the head of DRAM development over at SK Hynix. I'm probably, as they would say, preaching to the choir with many of you, but obviously at the end of the day, 
you can have as much compute performance as you would like, but you also need to, as they say, feed the beast. And memory bandwidth, latency, caching, and so on are just as important as, you know, the megahertz on the GPU or, you know, the number of CUDA cores or stream processors or whatever. And it's not just a case of you need the memory to be, well, a large quantity, but it also needs to be done in a way that, uh, well, let's just say it's a very complicated topic. So it's going to be kind of a race, and it's definitely a case where we're seeing some interesting events going forth. Oh, I also want to just mention this real quick. Um, uh, this is like a bonus thing that I wasn't initially intending to throw into the video, but I just wanted to mention... Uh, in case you're, um, you know, have kind of had a social media blackout or something like that and you haven't seen it, Ratchet and Clank is coming to the PC. Uh, this is Rift Apart, of course, which was a P previously PS5, essentially launch window exclusive. And yeah, it's coming to PC. It's going to be on Steam and Epic. I don't know if it's coming to any other store. Um, I don't really have too much to say about this yet because unfortunately... The minimum system as well as recommended system requirements have not been announced. I've had a number of people ask me what my opinion is of this and how the game is going to work across PC. I mean, honestly, there are dozens of different ways the developer can crack the egg. Um, obviously, at the end of the day, um, the benefit of the PS5 is that every PS5 has a fast drive, you know? It has a fast NVMe-based drive. Um... And that combined with all of the other stuff that we've spoken about a billion times, you know, crack and decompression, blah, 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 means that getting data from the SSD isn't too difficult. And the PS5 has around 12.5, 13 gigabytes of memory, I think, available to it. Um, uh, obviously, you have the OS reserve. So really and truly, you can do this numerous ways. Again, as of the time I'm recording this, there are no minimum specifications. You can look at games like uh, Returnal and Forspoken to get some idea, perhaps, of what the developers will do. They could just, for example, have a minimum requirement of 16 gigabytes of main system memory, 8 gigabytes of uh, GPU memory, and that could be for the lower end, and then maybe they could have 32 gigabytes as recommended, or they could utilize something like GPU decompression. The main taxing element of the Ratchet and Clank game, I still haven't played it actually on the PS5, I just kept meaning to and then just never got around to it, so I guess I'll play it on PC now. Um, one of the main areas, of course, that really tax it is simply because you've got those portals, so you basically instantaneously go through the portal and get into a new area, but to my understanding, the portal also is like the world literally is there it's like you're stepping through to a new area so it's not like you go through the portal and now you're transported to a new area it's like most of that you know the beginning section of that portal is basically loaded in so if you're in area a and a portal leads you to area b which is a completely different location basically you still have to load that into memory you know using the ssd of the ps5 so it's going to be very interesting to see how this works and what type of um, what type of minimum specifications we can see? Obviously, at the end of the day, there's a lot of different ways they can get around this. Uh, on low-end PCs, you could also do things like, of course, lowering the texture quality down to turnip quality, and so on and so on. So it's going to be fascinating as well to see what happens with lower-end GPUs, but also cards like the let's say RTX 4060 Ti. And let's say the 3070, which have 8 gigabytes of memory, of course, but have a relative high amount of compute performance. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with this. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.